In today's class, I'm going to teach the ultimate beginner's guide to how to get started with investing. Now, as an investor, our goal generally is to buy a stock low and to sell it at a higher price at a later date. So the focus of this episode is going to be to teach you how to find the best stocks to buy. I'm actually going to walk you through the two systems that I use. I use one system for active trading, also known as day trading in my case, and I use a separate system for finding stocks that I want to buy and hold for a much longer period of time. The standards are different. As an active trader, I'm looking for stocks that have the potential to go up 100, 200, 300% in a single day. But as an investor, as someone who maybe is taking a position on your phone and hoping to hold it for weeks or months, you actually don't want that level of volatility. Sure, it'd be nice if the stock goes up two, three, 400%, but stocks that are that volatile that quickly can go down just as quickly as they went up. And if you're not there to monitor the position, you can end up taking an unnecessary loss. Most people who eventually become day traders start as simply investors and becoming an investor is incredibly easy. The market has never been more accessible than it is today. On your phone, from an app, you can access the market, you can start buying and selling shares, and just like that, you are an investor. Now, becoming a profitable investor is a different story. In my opinion, profitability comes down to choosing the best stocks to buy. After all, if you buy a stock and it goes up, you'll be profitable. If you buy a stock and it goes down, you will lose. If you are someone who wants to make a serious profit in the market, you're gonna have to work for it. But I'm gonna share with you the system that I have personally followed over the past 10 plus years of active trading and passive investing. So I wanna begin high level by talking about how to start investing. So if we look at a stock like Nvidia or we look at a stock like Tesla, both of these stocks have had periods where they were incredible investments. The price kept going higher and higher and higher, where we're talking about 50%, even 100% returns in a relatively short period of time. During a period of time when the overall market might have only been returning 10 or maybe 12% at most. When it comes to being an active trader or an investor, really the strategy falls into two camps. You have the people who look for a trend and want to jump on that trend and continue to ride it as long as they can. And then you have people who are counter trend traders. So a trend trader is going to look at something like this. And again, this could be a daily chart where this is, you know, three months of time, or this could be a five minute chart where this is a few hours of time. But a trend based trader is going to look for these first pullbacks right down here as an opportunity to buy a stock that is strong that is showing some serious strength and that has the potential to keep going. So they may buy here, more people may buy here, more people may buy here, and there'll even be some people that get in up here and up here. People will continue to buy these pullbacks in an effort and an attempt to profit from the underlying trend that is continuing. Counter trend trading is the opposite. A counter trend trader is someone who is going to look to profit from a stock that is reversing and going down or a stock that has been selling off for a long time and has the potential to bounce. So if you have a stock that's been dropping for a long time, a counter trend trader might be looking to buy it right down here for the reversal back up. What I will tell you is that both as an active investor and as an active trader, counter trend trading is very difficult. You're trying to predict a reversal. And if you're a beginner, I wouldn't even try it, to be honest. It didn't work for me and it won't work for most beginners. It's a lot easier to find something that's trending up and to profit from jumping on that trend than it is to try to predict when this incredible stock like a Tesla or Nvidia is going to reverse and turn around. So rather than trying to predict a reversal, I think it's much easier to look for the trends and jump on. So that means the two things we really have to talk about today is number one, how to find the system for finding the best stocks, and then number two, where to buy. If I could teach you these two things, you're gonna walk away with some actionable skills that you can implement in your own trading and investing today. I think a mistake that a lot of aspiring investors make is they're always looking for the next NVIDIA or the next Tesla. And so what that means is they're really, they've got their ear to the ground when people say, oh, this stock is gonna be the next one. They start buying these stocks that are very speculative because, a lot of stocks are going to be called the next NVIDIA 
but they're not actually going to become that. They're not going to do anything even close to what NVIDIA has done. And so if you lock up your money in these stocks that are so speculative, you probably won't have much of a return. And in the meantime, NVIDIA might have continued moving higher. So the traders that do the best seem to be the ones that focus in on the stocks that are actually trending right now. So you might say, well, gosh, NVIDIA is so ex extended and expensive up at this price right here. I missed it by not being in, you know, down here. But most people missed it. Most people were not in down here when nobody wanted it, right? When it was selling off and nobody cared about it, people weren't buying it. It's as it started to come up that people said, oh gosh, this is something I should participate in. And people start buying these pullbacks and these pullbacks. And usually what happens is as the price goes higher, the volume gets higher because there's a phenomenon in the market where when something gets expensive and it's moving up, people only want it more. And it doesn't make sense but the market can be irrational and we can profit from an irrational market. So I'm going to discourage you from trying to find the next NVIDIA or the next Tesla and instead show you the tools that I use to find the stocks that are moving right now, because these are the ones that I want to be looking at on pullbacks to see if I can accumulate a position. So I'm going to begin by showing you the system that I follow to find stocks for an investment. Now, this is very different from the system I follow when I'm looking for a stock for day trading. We're going to go over that in a minute, but to help you understand why there's a difference between these two criteria. When I'm day trading, I'm hunting for extreme volatility. And that's because I'm looking for a stock that could go up 200, 300, 400% in one day. When I'm trading, especially with a relatively small account, like I was when I was getting started, if I want to make $1,000 in a day and I only have $1,000 in my account, I need to find a stock that can go up 100%. Now, as an investment for a longer term hold, something that volatile would actually be not really a, a smart thing to buy because by the time it's squeezing up in the middle of the day, you might be buying it already up 70, 80%. But usually when they make those really big moves, they don't sustain them. They go big, big, and then they come back down. So there's opportunity to profit in there, but you've got to be able to be in front of the computer and watching the trade. So for a longer term investment, I want to kind of bring down the volatility a little bit. And I do that by increasing a couple of the filters that I use when searching and breaking down the criteria of whether or not this is something I'd consider. So the tool that I use to create my watch list for investing is called Finviz. And you can see it right here, F-I-N-V-I-Z.com, Finviz.com. And this is a free tool that you can use. It's They have a lot of ads on it. Um, and it's not a tool that you can use for day trading because the data is not a, like streaming real time. It's more of creating lists. So what I do is I go into the screener right here. I click on the screener. And now I can begin putting in my criteria for what I want to look for. Okay, so right now we've got a total of 9,500 stocks. We need to whittle that down. And I'm going to do that by setting some criteria, just minimum criteria to help me sort of filter out the type of stocks that I want to buy. So number one, um, I'm going to choose um, capitalization of the stock. And I, I'm, well, I'm actually going to start by um, selecting float. And I want to do a float of greater than 500 million shares. Now, this might be a term that some of you are not familiar with, the float. Uh, or the, the number of shares outstanding. But what this refers to is that when the company did its um, its IPO, they issued a certain number of shares to the market. Stocks have a float of like under a million shares, for instance. There's only 23 of them here. These are going to be stocks that can be ridiculously volatile. Now, there's nothing wrong with that for day trading, but these are going to be really too volatile for a long-term investment. So this isn't something that I would trade. And these are all, I mean, look, they only have a million shares they've sold. So the market cap is calculated by taking the number of shares, so the number of shares times the price. So if they have 1 million shares outstanding and the price is $2 a share, this company is only worth 2 million bucks. That's not very impressive. I mean, it, you know, I mean, for just not to be rude about it, but you just can't expect that that company is probably going to do a lot anytime soon. Um, their balance sheet probably has a lot of debt. They probably need to raise money. So that's not something that I would consider uh, very seriously. Okay. So for number of shares, I'm going to say uh, that's got to be over 500 million. Now, by doing that, we've narrowed down our list pretty substantially here to 387 stocks. So that's 
that honestly is terrific. Um, there, you could even go a little lighter if you felt like, well, maybe I've cut out uh, some good ones. You could say, well, I'm going to do over 200. But for right now, we're going to start with over uh, 500. So the, I tighten the filter and then I can loosen it if I need more ideas. Okay, so this is just simply giving me the number of shares available to trade. Oops, um, put it at 500. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to go into um, the technical tab. And I'm going to start entering some technical criteria. Because as we know, I want a stock that is moving. And so if we, if we think about what does it look like when a stock is moving up, there are some technical ways that we can describe this stock. Okay, so how would we describe it? Performance. Uh, well, we certainly wouldn't, if it was down 10% on the week, I guess that wouldn't be the end of the world. But, you know, weekly performance, well, maybe that's not, we certainly wouldn't want something that's down 50% on the month. But what if, what if we step all the way back down to like the last year? What if we said, I want to see something that's up 50% in the last year, because that's going to be the NVIDIA type of stocks, the stocks that have been trending higher, they've been moving. By setting that criteria right there of 50% in the last year, we've now narrowed down our list to 60 stocks to look at. So a watch list of 60 stocks is a lot of stocks to watch. That's a little bit too big of a watch list. Now, you could do that. You could just say, well, 60 stocks, and I'm going to go through the list each day, and I'm going to look at the charts, and I'm going to see if any of them look like they're setting up for an entry. We're going to talk about entries and exits in a moment. Now, the nice thing between investing and day trading is that the entry and exit patterns, those signals are very similar. So there's good news there. Uh, there's not a lot of re repeat um, learning. Okay, so... Um, so over 50% in a year, this is going to show us the stocks are certainly moving. But I think we can do a little bit better than that. So the 20-day simple moving average, what this is, is this is an indicator that is the average price of the stock over the last 20 days. So it's, it's constantly updating. So as the stock is moving up, this indicator is moving up. But it's always going to lag a little bit behind because if the stock goes up here, well, let's say this is $200 a share. It's average over the last 20 days, if it came from 175, is certainly not 200. The average is going to be a little bit lower. So generally, these averages uh, you know, trail slightly behind as the price is going up. However, if the stock started to decline, then the average would flip and it would be above the stock for a little while as it's coming down. So I would say at a minimum, we want to see that the price is greater than the 200, uh, sorry, greater than the 20 day simple moving average. So let, let's just say just very simply that we want to see that this stock is price above the 20 SMA. That just dropped us down to 38. That's fantastic. So there were some stocks on there that although they were up 50% in the last year, it's possible that if we had looked closely at some of those charts, the stock had gone up 100% and now is down here you know, where it was, it was still up 50%, but it was underneath its moving average and it was clearly coming back. So we don't care about it in here. We want to trade it while it's still in the uptrend in this area. This is the area that I'm interested. Okay, so we're going to disregard those stocks that were below the 20 day simple moving average. Now the criteria that we've entered so far, number one, float over 500 million shares, performance up 50% over the last year, and price above the SMA has given us a list of 38 stocks, which actually isn't bad, but I would say maybe if anything is a little small. Out of 9,500 stocks, we've only got 38. So I think what I'm comfortable doing in this case is going back to shares outstanding and bringing it down one notch to 200 million. If I do that, we come up to about 113 possible stocks. This would be to your preference if you want to keep your filters a little tighter or a little bit more open. Uh, but I'm going to start with a little bit more open. And now that I have this list, I'm going to sort it by price. Now, the reason I'm going to sort it by price is because I, well, I could also do some filtering here and that would be just fine. I am not going to be very interested in trading these low price stocks uh, for a longer term hold. They're just, they're too cheap. Uh, while on the one hand, a low price stock, it's easier to get a larger percentage move. On the other hand, most of these stocks are cheap for a reason. The companies aren't doing super, super well. And I just don't want to be holding a stock like that and then have news come out that they've you know, sold assets to raise money or sold more shares to raise money. Those are all negative events. It wouldn't be good. So there's sort of two ways to do this. Number one would be 
to set a price filter of sim simply, uh, honestly, above, above $10 is an easy hard cutoff minimum. You could even go a little higher, like above 40 or $50 a share, and that would be better. While it's true that these are going to be a little bit more expensive, these are going to be companies that are better established. So I'm going to be uh, preference, have a strong preference towards slightly higher price. In any case, I'm sorting the list by highest price uh, to begin with. So now we've got a list by adding, um, making a slight adjustment on two filters. We added um, number four uh, price above, um, above 50. And we changed this from 500 million and we brought it down to 200 million just to give us uh, some more alerts, some more potential stocks to watch and to build a watch list from. Okay, now most of them are still going to be above 500 million, but uh, there'll be a few that are a little bit lower. Okay, so now that we've got our um, our list, we have to start going through each of these stocks and deciding whether or not these are even worth trading. We haven't even looked at the charts yet. I mean, you can see the little chart if you mouse over it, but we've got to start looking at these in a bit more detail. So now what I do is I put this um, sort of on the side here, and you can use whatever platform you like. If you use Thinkorswim or you you know you use the, the platform that I've built, Day Trade Dash, that's fine too. Um, either way, I'm going to use Day Trade Dash. I'm going to pop out this chart here. And we're going to start going through some of these stocks and looking at specifically the daily charts. That's what we're focusing on right now. We're not looking at intraday time frames. We're just looking at big picture daily chart. So the first on the list, which is the highest price, is NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA is a stock, obviously, that has been moving up very well. It has had pullbacks, and those pullbacks get bought up, and it continues higher. So this is a stock that I would definitely add to my short list. So I like to keep my watch list on a Google Sheet, but you can use whatever you prefer. So I'm just going to copy um, the last row there and type in NVIDIA, and this is going to start calculating automatically. So um, watch list for longer term holds. Okay. So so that was um, so NVIDIA is the first one. Then we're going to come back to it. We're not talking yet about specific entries. We just want to say, does this chart pattern look good? Is the stock moving higher? And is it um, plausible that we could be buying in any of these areas and it could continue higher? And I'd say the answer right now is yes. OK, so that's NVIDIA. Number two is Netflix. So Netflix, um, I'm, I'm obviously familiar with the company. I always think it's better to be familiar with the company because you understand what their business model is. Um, it just makes you feel more comfortable owning the shares. This is a stock, however, that um, if you look at the chart, you can see that it has been pretty volatile. And something that happens with this, which is a little bit more technical, but you see these windows on the chart? We call these gaps. These are occurring uh, when the company has earnings. So every three months, the company puts out quarterly earnings. And man, the market reacts in a big way. So the last two have been positive, which is good. Uh, but previously, there was um, a period of some negative earnings. And this was an area of concern. Big drop down, big drop down. So for that reason, uh, unfortunately, for a longer term hold, that would mean holding through these types of events. I think that that is going to carry too much risk on this particular stock. So looking at the daily chart, I'm able to see that, identify that, and for that reason, rule out NVIDIA. Microsoft, uh, sorry, uh, Netflix. Microsoft. Uh, this is a stock that does not have those similar gaps. Uh, it is definitely steadier on the daily chart. It's definitely been moving higher. It's trending up. Uh, AI tech has been a boost for sort of all of these uh, companies. So it appears that it's been holding uh, a bit of what I would call a ascending support line. This is getting into a bit more of my technical analysis uh, portion of doing due diligence. But as I look at this, I always want to ask if I can get in as close to support as possible. So an entry anywhere along this blue line could be valid and I could hold the stock as long as it stays above it. And if it breaks below it, then that could be an exit. So I would say um, Microsoft MSFT. So we'll copy this row, copy, paste, and type this in. MSFT, boom. So we'll bring that one up and we'll have that one on our list as well. Okay, next one down. And I just keep going down the list. This is my process. I just keep going down the list and I look at each one of these stocks. So Caterpillar, I'm a big fan of the stock, have liked it for a long time. It's moving higher. So this is another one where I would be interested in buying pullbacks. I would do the technical analysis, looking at the chart, trying to understand where it's shown historically support and try to get in as close to those levels as possible. 
So Caterpillar, yep, would definitely add that one to the list. All right, so Cat, oh, we got to copy paste. So copy paste, Cat, so on and so forth. So I continue going down the list until I've created uh, what I would say is a solid list of stocks to consider. Now, there are some industries that I'm going to generally stay away from. Usually, uh, I'm going to stay away from energy. Uh, energy stocks, <laughs> these ones are not usually going to be as volatile. Um, something that I'll also be looking at as I pull up um, more information here is I'm going to be looking at uh, the dividends that these stocks issue, whether or not they do even issue a dividend. And this is helpful because usually stocks that have a higher dividend have a lower return rate. The problem with being a dividend investor I, and I, I'll, there's separate classes that I have specifically on dividend investing. There's a very well, uh, strong track record of, and history behind that strategy. However, if you are a beginner investor, you have a smaller account. Well, let's look at the percentage on some of these dividends. If I scroll up on the stock, um, up here, Bristol Myers, uh, Qualcomm, Lockheed Martin, their dividend yield is like 1.8%, 2%. You know, some of them are a little bit higher, but a lot of these dividend returns are are quite low. So, um, and I'm not sure that these have dividends. Uh, let's see. Oh no, actually, um, these ones. Sorry, these ones do. But the the the, the problem here is that if you put in a thousand dollars, you put in you have a thousand dollar Robinhood account, and you put it all into a dividend stock. How much are you going to get at one point eight percent? You know, you're going to get eighteen dollars. You're going to get an eighteen dollar return over a full year of holding the stock. That's nothing. It doesn't move the needle. So for me, when I was getting into the market, I had a relatively small account and I had the goal of making $50,000 a year. That was what I wanted to make. This was more than 10 years ago. $50,000 went a lot, a lot further in those days. And I wanted that as my goal. I was living in Vermont and I thought this is enough for me to be doing well. But I knew that if I put the money I had into a dividend stock, I wouldn't even be making a, a couple thousand dollars a month. I wouldn't even make a thousand dollars a month. The return would just be too low. So I knew I had to look for areas of the market where I could get more return. And I wasn't going to get it in dividends. I would need to get it from the underlying stock actually going up in value. Uh, and again, the reason I like, there's two reasons I like these higher price stocks more. Um, one reason is because these stocks tend to be stocks that have a lot of attention. They're well established, they have a lot of momentum, and they can continue higher and they can do really nicely. So that's number one. Number two, most of these stocks will also have options trading, which is a way where you can leverage a smaller account to grow it faster. And you can still do that as an investor. You could buy an options contract. You can hold it for, if it's a weekly or a monthly, you know, for a quarter out, you can hold it for a good stretch of time. And as long as the underlying asset goes up, then you will get that nice return. Now, options are risky because they are a derivative and they can go up many multiples of your underlying asset. So if you buy the like 360 calls, let's say, just as an example, if you bought the option contract on Caterpillar at 360, we could just go in here and, and check it real quick. Um, not to take a big tangent, but just for those that are curious. So uh, all products, Caterpillar, so we're gonna go. We're gonna just look. Well, we don't want to do weeklies. We'll go. Um, you know, like a, a few, couple weeks out, month out. So the 360 calls here. Let's see. Um, let me just. I'm just gonna go out uh, one more, one more stretch here. Okay. So what we want to see. Um, we've got 1075 by 11 dollars at 345. 350. 355. 360. So our 360 call right now is trading at five dollars. $5.80, but let's just call it $5. If the underlying asset, if the price goes up to $360, then this is going to go from $5 to approximately $11 uh, a contract, which means this is going to go up 100%. The underlying asset only went up $10 a share. It's not even a 10% return, but this went up 100%. That's the power of option contracts. But if this drops down to you know 330 or something like that this is going to go this is basically going to go to zero it'll be worth worthless so trading options uh is is definitely going to require more active management and it's taking on more risk and the question for you as a trader is 
what is the return that you're trying to get? How much risk are you willing to take? And how much time do you want to dedicate to studying the market? So the if, basically, if you want to spend almost no time, then that's where you find something you could buy, you park your money in it, and you walk away. And you don't look at it for a while. Even these stocks like your NVIDIAs, uh, your Caterpillars, your Netflix, these are going to be stocks that you're going to want to definitely set a stop on. You want to make sure you're managing your risk. You don't want to just hold something that's up 50% over the last year and just let it ride because it could, it could turn around. It could start to roll over. If you really want to go with super, super low risk, then you're just looking at the you know, putting your money into an ETF, but you're going to sacrifice the return. So this is that spectrum, I would say, where... Um, as a trader, it's risk and return, right? So as you increase your, it doesn't matter which side's on, but as you increase your risk, your return, um, your return potential can go up. If you're day trading, this is where you can see 400% in one day. That's huge. If you're trading options, you know, that are a little bit risky, this is where you could see, any, again, anywhere from, you know, 100 to 1,000% or more. This is big but the risk is high. And then you have down here, which would be like putting your money in the checking account. Now you don't want to do this most likely because you already understand that if you put your money here, it's not even keeping up with inflation. So you have to take some degree of risk. Now you could put your money into a treasury bond at you know 4% or 5%, something like that. There's some that are 7%, the shorter term. So you could do that. That gets you a little bit higher. Again, on a thousand dollar account, 7%, that's only $70 for a whole year, right? $70 for a whole year, it's not going to move the needle. So when you've got these smaller accounts, this is when you're going to be more speculative. Now, if you're someone that's got a bigger account, you've got twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, you've got more money to work with. So you can afford to hopefully take a little bit more risk and you should be rewarded for that risk that you're taking. But obviously you have to study and you've got to take your time. This is the thing that I'll remind you. There is a huge amount of potential in the market, but you have to work for it. It's not going to come easily. You've got to work for it. But if you're willing to work hard for it, then you know this profit is out here. It's 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 yours for the taking, but you've got to work for it. Okay, so back to our um, list here. So I'm not going to go through um, every single stock that's on the list, but my process. This is how I create the watch list. So what I'm essentially looking for on this list are the stocks that present to me as being um, the strongest. And they're going to present that way by showing that they've got the biggest range. So I, another way that I can sort this is by looking at the highest volume. When I look at the highest volume stocks, these are going to show me the ones that are the most liquid. Most liquid means it's very easy to get in and out. And that's also going to mean they have a lot of um, volume, most likely in the options contracts. So Amazon, very liquid stock. But another stock where you can see these gaps on the daily chart formed uh, most likely by earnings events. So some gaps, but household name, strong stock. AMD, um, this is a stock that has been quite strong as well. Um, you can see in this instance, we might be able to look at this and say, hmm, okay, we could have support down in this area. So I would say AMD is one that we could add to our uh, list as well here. So we're going to add AMD. Um, Amazon, I would add it. Um, I think we'd be able to find, again, it's on the watch list, which means we generally like it. And we start, once we get into the section where we're going to talk about entries, we start saying, this is the area where I think I can afford buying it based on my risk to reward ratio. So this class is multi-part right now. We're talking first just about, um, finding the stocks and creating the watch list. So what else do we have? We had, um, MU, this one, um, let's see, what's the price of it now? And I need $3 a share. So that one's coming up a little bit. TSM, a lot of tech stocks on here. Oracle, see now Oracle has this big gap. I don't really like that, um, the big gaps. That's gonna be too much risk um, for me. MU though, that was okay. So uh, that one would be fine to add. So we'll put a couple more stocks on this list and then we'll get into the process of um, where I show you sort of the technical component of finding your entry. Okay, so let's see. So we had MU. This is an energy company here, NRG. So we're going to disregard that. OVV, disregard that. PSX, disregard that. These are energy stocks. Um, the fact is, uh, I'm clicking on there. I think it's going to go here, PSX. The, the fact is there have been times where energy has been a strong sector, but 
it, it is definitely subject to politics and to international, um, you know, foreign relations and stuff like that. So there's a bit more volatility there. GE, General Electric, this is not a stock you would typically think of as being a big, uh, a big mover, but it actually has been doing really well. It's got some nice momentum. So this is one that I would definitely consider. This is a nice return. So GE, I'll put that on the list. Again, we're, we're looking at stocks here that I think I can uh, manage my risk on for longer term holds. These are not short trades. These are stocks I'm comfortable holding for days, weeks, months, uh, maybe years. Dell, unfortunately, with that gap up and, the, and selling off, that's going to be tough. Um, MPC, Marathon Petroleum, that's out. IBM, this one. Um, tech, of course. Uh, bigger gap here. Probably going to leave that one alone for right now. VST, Utilities. I'm going to leave uh, that to Utilities alone. So I think we've done a pretty good job here um, creating a list. Now, two, four, five, six, seven, that's fine. Uh, but what we can see is that these are pretty predominantly on the tech side. Uh, Caterpillar is an outlier, but that's fine. Uh, from the dividend position, let's see. Um, these are either don't return a dividend or they return a fairly low dividend. No surprise there. I usually like to look at the dividend growth over the last three years, five years, and 10 years. Uh, this is not auto-populating, so I'll take that out. Um, some of these are not populating. Free cash flow, I do like to look at that. Negative free cash flow on MU. The best free cash flow is on um, Microsoft. So free cash flow, something worth looking at. These are some of the more technical components. Again, the, these are the, well, these are fundamental, but they're technical in a, they're sort of detailed in nature is what I really mean. Uh, Microsoft also, however, has a lot of debt and so does Amazon. Uh, nonetheless, and you can look at the debt to shareholder um, equity ratio, but uh, nonetheless, I think this is a good starting point and we're going to now focus on looking at the chart. Okay, so when we pull up the chart on these, and we'll start at the top of our list now with NVIDIA. All right, so we've got NVIDIA at the top right here. So when it comes to looking for an entry, I said that I had uh, really two goals here, to show you my system of how to find the strongest stocks, and then number two, where to buy. Okay, so when it comes to where to buy, I'm gonna start drawing some trend lines. This is technical analysis. I typically will draw a line uh, where I connect the low of a recent pullback, like right in here, and I connect uh, right in here. So now this is showing a ascending support trend line. Truthfully, it's not easy to draw many of them because it's been so strong. Um, this could be a resistance line in this area, but it's not as well defined as some of the others that you may see me draw on some of the a new some of the other charts that we'll look at. This is a little bit unusual here. Um, it's such a steep trend line, but it seems like it was support on the stock right in this area, and then became a little bit of resistance in here, not able to really hold above it super well. So this is a stock where we have um, this sort of. Uh, support area here that's a little ways away and a resistance area here. So on this, I would probably say since this candle bounced down here off of the blue 20 moving average, that the 20 moving average would be a spot that I would start to be interested. And I would consider this to be approximately my max loss on the position. So that means entries would be around 828. And stop would be down in this area. At that time, the stop would be moving up. It would start at about 760. And that would be at that moment if we came down to that level today. But this support level is moving up. So the longer I can wait to get in, the better, the closer I could get to being in right off support here at around 830, potentially with a stop as close as 830. If that was if we wait and pull back all the way till here. Then I could be getting in here off the 20 moving average approximately and off of ascending support. So what I would say is I'm going to start to be interested in this stock right now at about 828. Now there's a couple things I could do. I could actually go into my live trading account and I could say, all right, NVIDIA, NVIDIA right here. I am interested in buying this at um, 828. And I could start with not 5,000 shares, but just 
uh, 10 shares, something like that, something small just to break the ice. And that would be a fine way to break the ice and get in. Now, if I was willing to buy up to 100 shares, if I wanted to buy 100 shares of this, I could do something a little bit, a little fancy, and I could go out here. Let's see, look at the strike price. I'm gonna go further out. We're gonna look, this, is an, this would be an options trade. Um, yeah, see, we could go a little ways out at $8, uh, sorry, at $830 right here. What I could do, and this, this would be, this would be risky because it would require me to be able to buy 100 shares. So realistically for most small account traders, this might be a little too expensive, but what you could do, um, is you could sell, you could sell one contract here at, um, the price of approximately 34. And when you do that right here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna earn you $3,400 of profit. You will earn $3,400 of profit immediately when you press the sell button, but you'll be obligated to buy 100 shares of the stock at eight, uh, $830 a share. This is called a cash secured put. I teach this more in my options trading class. It's a little complicated. Um, anyways, it's a strategy that you can use when you want to set a buy order when, when essentially you're saying is exactly as I am right now, that I would love to buy this at 828. And if it comes down to that level, I will buy it at that price, but you are committing yourself. You are obligating yourself to do that. And it is going to tie up buying power to do it quite a bit of buying power, as you can see, right? So, you know, a thousand shares of this would be $830,000, a hundred shares is 83,000. So it is tying up quite a little, quite a lot of buying power. Cause the minimum you could do is a hundred, uh, one contract with, which is a hundred shares. Okay. So for most of you trading with small share size on something like this, um, you would just put your buy order at 828, you would set it, you would forget it. And you would say, well, not forget it. You would keep an eye on it, but you would know that that's a spot where you want to buy. Okay. Next one down, uh, Microsoft. So on Microsoft, again, we want to get in as close to support as possible. The reason we want to do that is because we want to get in and we want to set our max loss basically as close to our entry as we can. That way, if we get in down here near support of this blue line and it breaks and it starts selling off, we're not going to hold it on this whole pullback. We're just going to get in and we're going to set a max loss on the position right underneath support. Sometimes a stock will test support, but as long as it closes and holds above it, then we're fine. So in this case on Microsoft, the support level is uh, down here at about 408. Okay, so the current price is 416. So similarly, I could say, all right, I'm interested in this at about 408. I could go and uh, put out the order to buy, you know, however many shares I want. So this one wouldn't be the options, cha uh, tra options chain. Um, I could go over here. Let's see, make this bigger. Um, go to Active Trader. And I could just say uh, MSFT, and then I scroll up here, scroll down till I find my order. Or I could just click here. Let's see. Oh, this is on instant buy. I got to turn that off. Auto send. So let it pull up the order, and then I would type it in 406, 406, something like that. Again, not going to do that many shares. Going to do 10 shares, something like that. Okay. All right, so 10 shares, set the order, let it go, and then you'll have your order in there that you can manage. So you can always go into your orders, working orders, filled orders, and you can see the orders that are currently pending. Now, this is an account that I'm not really trading in right now. This is, I have it set up, but I'm waiting for the move over to uh, Charles Schwab. Okay, so this is uh, Microsoft, again, looking to buy as close to support levels as possible. The levels that I'm looking at will be based on the position of the moving average, the 20 and the position of any ascending support level that I'm able to draw. Caterpillar, we'll do the same thing here. We're gonna pull up Caterpillar. And on this one, uh, right, so we've got entry, entry, uh, support, support. So here again, right around this level is support. That would be the safest place to be a buyer. Now, some people are gonna say, well, you know, this thing is gonna go all this way without me. And if it does that, it's fine. I wouldn't have been able to manage my risk by getting in at the very top because my, my stop is too far away. I ultimately want to keep my losses as small as possible. I will have losses, but I want to keep them small. So my entry on this that feels safe is going to be around 334. So that's the price that I'm going to watch. And I'm going to have to wait for it to come to my level. This is probably one of the most important things is being patient for your entries. Now, there is a saying 
that it's more important to be in the market than to just be sitting in cash. So it's it's difficult to time the market precisely. You could have the misfortune that the day you get in, the overall market has a big sell-off and your position goes down, or that the market is very strong for weeks and weeks and weeks and you're not able to get in. So there are really two ways that you can address this. Number one is you just simply accept it and, and you say, well, regardless of that, I need to manage my risk on my entries. And I want to be really very much a sniper on getting in at the exact right spot, setting my stop loss, and then waiting until it comes up. Now, the nice thing with a stop loss is that it's an order you set with your broker where it'll sell the position for you at your predetermined level of risk. So you say, I want to take this position, but I only want to risk 100 bucks. You get in, you set it, and boom. Now, if you bought this stock right up here, you have a much higher likelihood of getting your stop loss triggered because it's so extended, it could easily pull back, but then a week later, it continues to go higher. So it's not a good idea to just buy at the high and set the stop anyways. It's a better idea to buy closer to support and to set your stop just below that. So that's the smart way to do it. That way you can afford to be in while it's jumping around a little bit, and then you're able to participate in that next move to the upside. Now, the, the second way to deal with this issue of not being in the market is to do what's called cost averaging, which instead of buying all 10 shares at once, you would buy one share this week, buy one more share next week, one more share the week after. And then regardless of, you know, maybe the stock goes up a little bit or down a little bit in the next couple of weeks, you've moved yourself in slowly. And then your average price will be the average over, you know, 10 weeks of accumulating. That is a fine way to do it as long as you really want to hold this stock for a long time. If you want to hold a stock until it, you know, uh, for like a year or two years, then that's fine or, you know, or longer. But if you're wanting to take a, a position where you get in and, you know, as soon as it goes up here, you're going to take a little profit out, then you need to be a bit more calculated with your entry. So at the end of the day, it depends on how much you love the stock. Okay. All right. So we, I would continue to do this for all of the stocks that are on my watch list. AMD, again, support around here. I drew this line by connecting uh, the lows down here, right? Usually when you connect a couple of them, the others start, start to kind of line up. So I connect these up. Uh, if you want to learn more about my ultimate guide to technical analysis, I have another episode specifically dedicated to that where I get into a lot more detail. So if this some of this is over your head, don't worry. You, there's more to learn. Um, so AMD entry would be down here around 178, 179. Amazon entry on this one, right? So this one was a little tricky though because of the gaps. Now there might be some where, uh, well, let's see. That's an awfully steep line. A steeper line like that, it's easier for it to break. So we are kind of right at it right now. Uh, this might be the only one that it could be worth considering an entry around 174, but with a tight stop, acknowledging that because the support line is relatively steep, it does have a higher likelihood of breaking. Um, this is also a stock where you're, you've got 9 billion share float. The, the number of shares that have been sold is really, really high. So your expectation of, well, what is a profit target? Well, geez, it's only 180, right? To break through the high, maybe 185. So it's only $9 a share. So on a nine, on a you know a ten share position, it's only ninety to a hundred dollars. It's not a lot um, on a hundred shares. You know it's close to nine hundred to a thousand. So it just depends on how much money you can put into that trade. Uh, Amazon's going to be a little bit of a slower one. Mu this one again a little tricky, and something I don't usually like doing is trying to draw a line like this where it breaks below and is back above. So. I don't see a really obvious line on this right now. So the, again, this would be a super steep one. Don't love it. Probably wouldn't be my top for right now, but you know, it is holding around the 20 at the moment, which is this blue line. So as long as it can hold that level, uh, the low was $90. So I could take an entry with a stop at 90. I'd be risking about $3 a share. So with a hundred shares, that'd be $300 of risk. I always want the potential to make uh, at least twice whatever I'm risking. So I need to be able to make 600, which means my target would be uh, back up towards 100. That's not uh, out of this world as an expectation. I think it could be done. So that that might work. 
So now you should have a good understanding of how to build a watch list and where to look for your entries. We're typically going to be looking for areas of support where we can have the least amount of risk possible, acknowledging, of course, that trading and investing carry risk, but we want to minimize that risk. We want to be in a strong stock that has the potential to keep going higher, and we want to be able to participate in that upside. Now, I think the best way to start investing is just to break the ice and to take your first position, even if it's just one share, because what it's going to do is it's going to force you to learn a lot of the mechanics about how to actually press the buy button, how to press the sell button, how to enter your stop order. And a lot of it is, is very clear, but you've got to go through sort of the motion of doing it. And the best way to do it is with really small share size. So the amount of money at risk isn't significant. This is the process of converting sort of the knowledge that you're gaining in a class like this into the actual skill of being able to do it yourself and share it with other people that you know. Now, I want to differentiate um, the criteria that I use for finding the best stocks to trade between investing on the left and active trading on the right. So as I said at the beginning of this episode, I want to share with you my system for finding the very best stocks to trade, both as an investor, but also as an active trader. So as an active trader, remember what I'm looking for is volatility. I want to see something that's going crazy, that's moving like in a really big way. And I'll show you a couple examples of what that looks like so you better understand um, how this is going to appear on a chart. Okay, so here's some case studies. This is an example of a stock that um, you look at the chart and you'll see that this made a, a very significant move. The stock went from a low of about $7 a share right here up to $11 a share. This is a really solid move. I mean, look, it's not 100% in one day, but it's a big move. For me, it was enough to lock up $9,885 of total profit. Okay, so that's great. This one, APM, the stock went up over 100% in one day. This was a little bit of a bigger move. The previous day was trading at like $1.50, and then it squeezed up all the way to $18 a share. Okay, that's huge volatility. That's what we like. So this is the type of chart where, you know, you could be looking at this and be like, oh, that looks like, you know, NVIDIA. But this is a chart that took place over the course of just two hours. That's a huge move for two hours. So for this one, locked up $4,000 of profit, AISP, this is another one, a stock that had news, the daily chart, all of a sudden out of nowhere, it's like blast off. It had, you could see really dramatic, pulled back, popped back up, not the type of chart I would look at for a long-term investment, but for a trade, I'm happy to consider it and boom, $17,000 of profit, that is terrific. Okay, so now you see a couple examples of what that looks like. So what I'm looking for from a sort of technical perspective with an act for, an, for a stock to consider for active trading, float. With investing, we're looking for 200 million share float or higher. 500 million, usually higher as well. Tw less than 20 million is what I look for for active trading. So the reason that float goes way, way, way down is because we want to see the stocks have the potential to make those huge moves. And just as an example of um, some of these stocks, we could pull up, let's see, our Finviz here. And we could just, um, let's see, maybe we'll, I'll just um, open a new window here. I'll just copy paste this here. And we'll just do a new screener. Um, so all we're going to do here is look at the shares outstanding of under a million. I mean, we could do under 20 million, but I could do under 5 million. And then if we look at some of these, um, we're going to see some pretty crazy moves. So uh, under 5 million. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so some of these are very, very expensive. Let's see. Maybe what's the best way to view this? Uh, maybe this is okay. Well, some of these are kind of cheap. So $0.46, cents, $32. I'm going to bring this down to under a million just to get some of the really juicy ones, just to show you, for example. So APVO, this is a day, had some really big volatility. This is a day when from, this stock went up a lot. This one's been moving. Gene, that one's been moving. So you're going to see a lot of these sort of big candles, just volatile stuff. Now, again, as an active trader, we would love a day where a stock went from a low of $2.50 up to 12, even if it doesn't hold up that whole day. And I think this is also a good example where you're seeing these are red candles on these little charts. So a lot of these stocks, they made a really big move like AISP or QNRX, but they may not have all held up super well. Now this one's doing okay, but QNRX, this one came back down on the daily. It doesn't change the fact that on this day, 
the stock had 25 million shares of volume and at one point had gone from a low of two dollars and 69 cents all the way up to a high of well over six dollars you know it's over 100 percent in one day so what that means is we've got volatility and it goes both ways they can go up and then come back down so number one criteria i want to look at floats that are less than 20 million shares and i'm going to prioritize the lowest ones higher because i know those are the ones where we're going to see some of the biggest moves price it's got to be under 20. i don't want to trade high price stocks i want to trade the low price stocks because what i know is for a stock to go up 100 percent it happens a lot more frequently with like a two three dollar stock than it does with a 30 40 dollar stock i mean it's just sort of the simple math that if a stock goes from two dollars to ten dollars it's up several hundred percent but it only went up eight dollars a share in contrast for a 30 dollar stock to go up 500 percent it's got to go up over a hundred dollars a share it's a huge move that just doesn't happen as often so and then performance for investing i'm looking at and this is trend based both of these are trend based this is a tr this is for trend based trading where we're looking for something that's moving quickly and we're looking to jump on that trend so for investing we're looking for up 50 percent over the last year and above the 20 sma for active trading i'm looking for over 50 percent in one day and some of you might think geez well by the time it's up 50 percent in one day haven't you missed the bulk of the move and i would argue that uh no not necessarily because if we look at some of these trades here um on let's see which one was this AISP seventeen thousand dollars a profit I got in this uh, right here at three dollars uh, sorry what was it seven dollars a share was it seven dollars gosh that's so small uh yeah seven dollars a share and so at that point it was already up you know probably 40 percent from the previous day it already made a huge move but I bought here and it went higher and where did I set my stop well look at this blue ascending support line so I bought as it was breaking over that line and I set my stop right below it I said as long as it holds this line I'm happy to keep holding so while I'm using Finviz for building watch lists for long-term investing for active trading and for day trading I need scanners that are giving me real-time data so I have a development team that I hired that built out this platform for me and what we're doing is we're searching the market in real time for stocks that meet these criteria but not only are they meeting these criteria, the stocks are also making a new high at that very second. So when a stock pops up and is making five new highs in a row, it's, that means the stock is moving higher. And if it has that low float below 20 million shares, if it's priced under 20, if the performance is already up 40 or 50% on the day, then what I'm doing is I'm checking to figure out why the stock is moving up odds are it has breaking news so as an active trader the catalyst that creates the volatility that I thrive on are breaking news headlines so a stock could have FDA approvals clinical trial results for pharmaceutical companies or it could have quarterly or annual earnings any of these types of headlines can give the volatility that we crave on these low price stocks so these scanners are searching the whole market in real time for stocks that meet that criteria and this is a scanner that is actually producing audio alerts as well so i could click on this stock you know for instance bnai and i could pull it up and i could say all right well you know what's the story with this stock it's clearly moving higher and maybe in this case i wouldn't take a trade because i don't see an obvious chart pattern but in the case of uh, another stock i might pull it up and i look at the pattern and i say all right here's something where i feel like i can manage my risk now this one's a little bit on the cheaper side but you've got some ascending support in these areas so are there some traders that bought this pullback right here i'm sure there are because you could draw this support line just like this so here's something really cool once you get good at technical analysis at reading stock charts if you're doing it for investing you're doing it for daily analysis that's fine you can apply that to the intraday time frames because the patterns are universal the language is universal the patterns you'll see on the daily you'll see them on the intraday chart and so likewise a trader who's really good at intraday trading it's very easy for us to analyze the daily chart of a stock the biggest challenge for traders like myself who are trained to be active traders to get in to get out the hardest thing for us is to take long positions and just hold it there's two issues one we're used to trading lower price stocks but these are not the safest stocks to buy and hold because a lot of these stocks their balance sheet isn't that great the company is carrying a lot of debt they need to raise money and when the price comes up they use that as an opportunity to sell more shares onto the market and then the price goes back down so small cap low price stocks are not usually great for long-term investing 
So for us, we then have to focus on these higher price stocks that are a little outside of our wheelhouse, a little outside of what we're typically comfortable with, the NVIDIAs, the Teslas, you know, the Netflix and things like that. The challenge with this sort of transition between day trading and active investing is that uh, we tend to over trade. We don't like to just sort of sit and hold it because we're already sitting here all day watching our active day trades. So then we keep an eye on sort of the trades we're holding long term. And then we think, oh, this looks like it's going to drop. I should just sell it here. So our biggest problem is over trading. So where, regardless of where you're at, if you're someone who's wanting to come in as an investor and just get started and break the ice, everything that you learn, you can eventually apply to active trading. Now, if you're someone who's really more interested in active trading, but you're wanting to venture a little bit into the longer term, you've already built up a skill set that's going to make it easier for you to make that transition. So if you guys enjoyed this episode today in this class, if you learned something, I hope you hit that thumbs up and I hope you subscribe to the channel to see more classes on investing and trading strategy just like this. I'll see you for the next upload real soon.